Hello adventurers and welcome to another Sunhaven guide. This time we're going to talk about making bank in Sunhaven. Sunhaven has a multitude of ways to make coins, mana orbs, and tickets, but what's the best way to go about really making some change, you know what I mean? I've done the research and the math so you don't have to. Big sigh of relief, I know. Let's explore the best money making strategies in Sunhaven. With the help of two stellar patrons, Iranoth and Kat, we've put together a spreadsheet of every craftable item in the game, listing out their investment and their return on investment called ROI. We have a lot of data to share and we wouldn't have that data without the two of you. Aranoth and Kat, thank you so much for helping me with this project and helping me get it out to all of our Sunhaven farmers out there. If you'd like to see the data for yourself, I'm going to include a link in the description. You can go check it out. It's called the Sunhaven ROI spreadsheet. So how am I gonna lay this out? I've got this distributed into three different sections, kind of like my storage videos that I'm gonna share with you. I have early game, mid game, and late game. I have those distributed by skill level and where you are in the story. So early game will be before you have access to Nelvari and Withergate, two of the other towns in the game. Mid game will be that you have access to those two towns and you're around the middle of the skill tree for all of your skills and then end game will be after the story has been completed or you've finished up at least Nelvari's storyline. You'll also need to have a couple of high level skills unlocked to be able to do the methods that I'm going to list for you today. If there are any skills that are needed for specific items, I'll make sure to list those for you. That way you know what to invest in as you go forward with your skill points. Remember, if you get stuck and accidentally spend your skill points in the wrong spots, it's okay. You can earn community tokens and buy elixirs from Bernard at Town Hall to be able to unlock those if you're past your level 70 cap. Okay, I'm excited to get, get into this with you guys. So early game, okay? Here is everything that you have early game. Now you'll see that the B box is down there in the corner. That's something that you can unlock within the first two columns of the farming skill tree. Let me show this to you here. Over on the farming tab, you're gonna unlock beekeeper, okay? Both ranks, so it speeds you up. This is the only crafting table that you have to unlock for this first tier, this first early game section of making money. Otherwise, you have all of the crafting tables you need, and this is all of the tables that you start with early game, straight from the crafting table. You don't have to unlock anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the ones that you actually need. I'm going to trim these down a little bit. I've got my list here on the side, and we're going to get rid of the juicer, the composter, farmer table, both the furnace and the anvil. We don't need the tile maker. We don't need the cooking pot. So that gets us down to five key crafting tables that we're going to need. Now, mind you, you're going to be have to be growing crops and things like that. So you're going to want to invest in fertilizers, compost, and things like that. The data that I'm presenting to you today was calculated with no buffs and with no skill points. So even if you go the route of using no fertilizers at all, this will be profitable to you. Let's start with the oven. Let's go ahead and open our inventory here. There's a couple of items in here that I want you to mark down. Banana bread is one of them. This is probably gonna be one of the harder ones, okay? Because you have to go defeat the monkeys in the Western forest. They're kind of annoying. There's not a lot of them. This one might be at the end of your list of things that you want to do to make money. But if you are really awesome at combat, this is one that's going to be easy for you. Next one on the list that I want you to mark down, raspberry pie. This one is huge, huge, okay? Raspberry pie, no need for any combat. You can forage, you can make the sugar cane and the pie crust yourself, and you have a huge return on investment. The last one in this crafting table is the plain tart. Let's scroll all the way down here. It's very simple. You're just using custard. You're going to need at least one cow and at least one chicken. So you're gonna have to start investing there. Remember, you do not need a barn to have animals. You can just put them in a fence or have them free wandering on your farm and they will be perfectly fine. Remember, they do need feeding stations though. Don't forget about that. Next up is the basic furniture table up here next to our crafting table. There's a couple of things in here I want you to mark down. The boho round rug, you're going to need to have a sheep, one sheep, okay? So we have three animals so far that you're going to need. And then fabric, 
you can make from silk. So that's something you can get for free with very little effort by just foraging. This is one that you wanna put a star beside, boho round rug. Star, big star. There's two more in this list that you should be aware of. And let's see here, that would be the picnic table and all the way at the bottom, the basket of yarn balls. This one has the same components as the boho round rug, just less of them. So this would be a good one to double up on. Speaking of wool and yarn, let's come over to our loom here. I have five key items for you here that we need to touch on. The yellow gloves, you're gonna need corn for, very good returns. Same for the green. I don't know what it is with these two, but they're the best of the gloves. Those are the ones you should focus on. You're gonna scroll down to the rest of the craftable items here. The Sunhaven quilt, big. The throw blanket, very big. And the Elios blanket, awesome. If you're going to choose one to focus on, it's the throw blanket. Get yourself started with a ton of honeys and bee boxes, okay? Invest in bee boxes, get them going. Remember, the higher the cost of the flower, the higher the cost of the honey, but they're also good for experience. So if you're having trouble leveling up, you might want to invest in eating some of those honeys and selling the rest. Once you get your flowers planted and your bee boxes set up, your investment goes to zero, which is huge. You have returns that are multiplying upon themselves without any future cost. Big time, big time, big time, big brain moves, okay? So once you get your flowers planted, once they become mature, you no longer have to water them. You only have to pick up the honey every two days. Remember, you're going up to rank two with the beekeeper skill. Let's talk crops. What crops are we gonna invest in? Here's my list that I've got for you here. I'm gonna start in the spring and move to winter. Okay, your spring and summer options pepper is going to be a good one. The next one to concern yourself with would be shimmer root down here at the bottom. Consider as well, even more expensive is watermelon vines. So I know if you're just starting your game, these are gonna be huge investments that you might not be able to do in spring. That's okay. You can switch and do the foraging stuff with the other crafting tables instead of focusing on crops your first year. Summertime, again, our pepper seeds are available. Let's go ahead and do those. Melon seeds good option, shimmer root again, and watermelon. When fall rolls around, things change just slightly. We've got two that we wanna focus on, and one of these is going to give you multiple harvests, and that's going to be honeysuckle seeds. And pumpkins, you're going to want to plant in fall only. Lastly, here's your winter setup for crops. Scrolling all the way down to the bottom of the seed list, the Pythagorean berry seeds are gonna be your first choice, followed up by ghost peppers and snow peas. Don't forget about the crops that you need to grow for the items that we talked about in the other crafting tables. Wheat especially is going to be valuable to you. Remember, you can grow that in every season. Let's get into mid game. Now, before we get into that, I want to show you what skills I have invested. This is everything that you're going to need for the second tier, starting with exploration, all right? You can see that I've got a couple of things here that I've got started, but the most important one is going to be Adventurer's Cookbook. You wanna rank that up all the way to three of three. When we go to farming, there's a couple of things that you need to have selected. In the first row, you want Seed Maker. Second row, you want three of three in the Beginner's Cookbook. And in the third row, you want Beekeeper, Jam Maker, and Furniture Crafting, which opens the advanced furniture table for you. Lastly, in the mining category, there's only one thing we need to be concerned about, and that is the Outfitter skill. You can get there relatively easily, and it has two ranks that you need to get. Here are all of the crafting tables that are going to be associated with making money in this section. Remember that these also stack the things that you can do in early game, you can do in mid game and late game. Don't forget about those. Let's start from the top with the cooking pot. We have new recipes that we want to focus on now. And there's one key one that I want you to focus on. And that's this one right here, raspberry crepes. This is going to be the new recipe that you focus on for the cooking pot. Very high returns and easy to make. Q 
keep your honeys going, but also start on your jam maker. There's two jams to focus on here, and they're both forageables. You can purchase your own trees, or you can continue to forage out in the wild for these. The first one I want you to look at is peach jam, and your second in line is going to be the raspberry jam with just a slightly lower return value. On the crop side, the only addition that you have to be concerned with are grapes. They are fantastic, especially if you're going for a spellcaster or a mage build. Remember, you're going to have to have high levels of mana or create mana potions to be able to infuse those so they'll be ready for the next day. Let's talk seed maker. Now, I know this list is very, very long, but I do have a list for you to focus on. And I'm going to list these in order of highest returns to lowest returns. So your big money makers, I'm going to list first starting with cotton seeds okay cotton honeysuckle coffee beans green beans cranberry seeds kiwi berry seeds candy cane seeds pea seeds not snow peas just regular peas hops seeds and corn seeds all of these are going to give you massive amounts of returns if you're planting in bulk and doing a mega farm Let's move on to the anvil. There's a couple of things in here that we want to be aware of as well because we just unlocked them. And this is again where combat is going to become useful to you. The specter helmet and the specter robe are gonna be your two biggies for the anvil. And you're gonna see that they require specter slime. One other one to consider is the aerodynamic chest plate. If you invest in a baby griffin, you'll get your feathers for free and serves as another great way to make money. One last one here and it's on the advanced furniture table and it's going to be another rug, believe it or not. Remember the boho rug you can still make, but this time we're going to be focusing on the large white fluffy rug as well. And this is another one that's going to give you high returns. You're probably wondering, how do I make enough tickets and how do I make enough mana orbs? Easy, I've got two things per new city for you to focus on. For Nalvari, you're going to plant dragon fruit and cattails. They have the highest returns of any of the crops. And then for Withergate, you're going to focus on demon orbs and tomb melon. All right, what if you're at the end game? You've, you've been a veteran like me and a pro at Sunhaven for a while now through a couple different version numbers. And you're like, okay, what about me? Well, we do have one new crafting table for us to use, and that would be the ice cream cart. So I'm gonna add that to our lineup up, up here. And there are two things in the ice cream cart that we want to concern ourselves with. The first one would be the berry ice cream, which is currently bugged and it says strawberry ice cream, but it is the one that has the berry as a component. This one is a great one to invest in and the raspberry sorbet right below it. So these two together are gonna to be their items for the ice cream cart. Other crops to consider at the very end game are soul orbs, one of the highest returns in the game for crops. Plant those and use your seeds wisely. Every time you plant them, you will get seeds back. So go ahead and put them right back in the ground. For Nelvari, once you complete Nelvara's quest line, she will give you mana gem seeds. Do the same thing with those and you're going to want to sell those outright or turn them into jams for an even better investment. That is the data that we came up with for investing in items and getting high returns in Sunhaven. What's the you know best way to make money overall? For Sunhaven, soul orbs. Nelvari, mana gems. And for Withergate, the demon orb. Best of luck finding your perfect strategy to making absolute bank in Sunhaven. Enjoy your adventure.